There is a game that some amateur ham radio people, clubs like to play called fox hunting, uh, sometimes called bunny hunting. And what you do is you take a radio and set it up so that it transmits for a certain amount of time, then sleeps for a while and then transmits again periodically. So you then set some teams up and they use directional antennas and triangulation to try and find where this hidden transmitter is. So whoever finds it first wins the game. So it's usually done with some kind of transmitter and relays and timers and wires and tape and whatever to make it work. So I have designed one using an ESP32 microcontroller to control a radio chip. So I've designed it on a circuit board. It looks like this. And this uses the ESP32 TT Go, which has a display on it. It's got a couple 18650s. They, depending on which kind of batteries you use, they'll run anywhere from, and, and depending on how, how much time you spend transmitting and how much time sleeping. So I set it up for two minutes uh, send and three minutes sleeping. And that gives you, with good with the Panasonic really good batteries, you get about seven or eight hours. And some of the cheaper batteries, you might only get two or three hours. Okay, so back to this guy. There's, there's the radio chip, by the way. This is the VHF version. There is a UHF version available that we could um, make on the same board. Okay, so now you see what the card looks like. There's an SMA antenna connector, and this is a 3D printed case that it sits in. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can look at it. Show you what it does when you turn it on. Okay, so this is the main screen. Kind of shows you what's going on there. Just initialize the radio. So the current state is not transmitting and it, it hasn't, TX transmission count is zero, hasn't done anything yet. It sends out uh, whatever beacon text you want and whatever ID. So I've set it to my uh, ham radio license ID. And if you play music, you can select from various music files. You can set the frequency and you can set the RX offset. The reason there's an RX offset is that this thing can be controlled by sending DTMF command sequences to it. This button up here is a B0. If I press that, it will start transmitting and I've got a receiver set up over here so you'll hear it. So it'll play the music. Once it's done with the music, then it will then it'll play the beacon and the ID in the Morse code. We can, in fact, turn off the music if we want. We'll go to the radio settings. And we'll go down here to play audio file. Click on this. It says no. Go back. Now it'll go directly and just do Morse code. And it'll keep cycling for whatever the transmit time is. So how this menu system works is you press, you do a long press on the button, and it'll get you into the menu system. So if there's a, if there's a plus, let me go back to the top menu. If there's a plus sign, it's there's a sub menu available. Otherwise, there's just um, the text. So pressing this one would would cancel whatever sequence it's sending right now. So let's look in the radio settings first. So transmit by default is off. You could, if you turn it on, then it'll start sending. Does the same thing as B0 does. Transmit power, you choose between low and high, which is about five, five watts and three watts. The transmitting frequency, if you press on that, it, it lets you select it. So you can, if you rotate the dial, it moves uh, by kilohertz values, as you can see. If you click on it once, it moves by 10 kilohertz. If you click on it again, then it moves by hundreds. Click on it again, moves by megahertz. You can see it changing. You can set whatever frequency you want. You can long press B0, which will reset it. You can long press this button to accept the new value. So this is obviously VHF 134 to 174 megahertz. So we'll do a long press and go back to here. Okay, the call sign to enter the Click on it. So this one says beacon at the top, as you can see. So you press B0, long press, it resets it. So we could set this to, we'll call it Fox. F, rotate it up to O, and X. Then do a long press on the button, and then it'll send Fox. Here's the play audio file, yes and no. If we click on it, then it lets us select the audio file. Click on that, and we see the files that are on the SD, there's an SD micro card. 
click on this guy. Here's the Morse code interval and the that's the time between characters so you can run the Morse code a little bit faster. Radio timers in that menu we have start delay. That's for setting a number of minutes after sending the transmit button before it will actually start sending. It gives you time to to get away from it and start the race, whatever, without wasting battery yet. This is how long it transmits in seconds. This is how long it pauses in seconds. This is when the, when the timer runs out for transmitting. It can either stop immediately or it can finish the cycle because what it does is after it sends the music and the ID beacon and ID, then it'll just keep looping, just starts over again. So when you tell it to stop, it might stop no matter where it is, or it might finish the cycle, depending on what this setting is. So it's immediate or finished cycle. Pause, you can have the radio sleep, which saves a little power, batteries last longer, but then you can't send commands to it. So this should probably be the default. Okay, more radio settings. Here's the uh, RX offset. Here's the bandwidth on the radio, so it's 12, 20, 12 and a half or 25. The CTCSS or DCS, whichever one you want to use there. Here's the CTCSS, 100 hertz. And here's the different values that are allowed. You just select one, hit long. Here's the receive version. Here's the receive volume, and you might play with that. This is the default setting seems to work. The squelch setting for the radio. DTMF, this is when you start sending a DTMF sequence to control the radio using your your radio. This is how long it will wait for the more, more characters in the sequence. We'll go back. Save system says you can save a set of frequencies or whatever you want, and then you can load them again later. It's an easy way of saving things. System settings, there's a lot of stuff in here. Display settings, here's where you can set the the dimming mode right now is none, but we could set the dim mode to timer and then they will have a new dim value. So you might want to dim it down to, let's say 2%. And now in two seconds, you'll see it got a little dimmer. Okay, that actually looks better. It doesn't blow the screen out as bad, does it? Here you can set the dim time before it'll dim. This sets the main brightness. I'm going to lower it a little bit. It looks a little better. For long text lines, they scroll sideways. Here's how you control how fast it does. You can set the color, color of the text, the color of the menu choices. Oops, back to system settings. Okay, display. Dial and button settings. You know, let's go back to this. Turn that timer off so it stops changing brightness on us. Okay, dial and button settings. If you don't like the dial going up when you turn to the right, you can make it in reverse. Just click on that, to set it to reverse. This is how long it takes to recognize a long press. Battery settings. To calibrate the battery, I use 10% resistors in there for measuring the battery voltage, so that it's not, it's not very accurate, so you need to calibrate it. And what you do is you do the reset calibration right here, you can do yes or no. I'll just say no, because we don't need to, I've already done it. And then it will, then, then you put it on charge. So you reset it, then you put it on charge. And when the batteries are fully charged, then the uh, voltage measurements will be calibrated again. Okay, this turns the display off on the main screen, whether it shows the battery or not. Probably kind of useless, because you're not typically gonna look at it when you're away from it, but maybe useful. If you have a new bin file, you just click on here, you put it on the put it on the SD microcard, radiofox.bin, and if it's there, then it will let you load it. So that's the easiest way to get new firmware in there. Here's a factory reset. And you can also do a factory reset by holding the holding this button down while you turn the power on. And it will do a factory reset for you. So you can go back to the previous menu either with back or with the top menu. Okay, that's about it. There's a reboot. You can reboot it from right here if you want. Long press saves the settings and then goes back to its whatever mode it was in. Now we've got baby elephant playing, I see. <laughs> okay. So that's about it. We will make these things available either as the PC board by itself without the TTGO 
or you can buy one already put together in the 3D case and ready to use. Just leave, leave any comments you have and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.